The movement of a pendulum is an example of simple harmonic motion. We know that in simple harmonic motion, there is always a restoring force acting towards the main position of a vibrating or oscillating system. In this video, we will have an in-depth look at the forces that act on a displaced pendulum. We will also discuss the factors that influence the motion of a simple pendulum. An example of a simple pendulum is the pendulum in a clock. It consists of a bob of mass m suspended by a light string fixed at its upper end. The length of the string is taken as L. At the main position, which we will denote as O, there are no net forces acting on the bob of mass m. Its weight, mg, acting downwards, is cancelled out by the tension in the string, acting upwards. If we displace the bob to an extreme position, A, we still have its weight, mg, acting downwards. If we carry out the resolution of this force and break it down, we can see that we have a force, mg cos theta, acting in this direction and a force mg sin theta acting in this direction. The force mg cos theta is cancelled out by the tension in the string as the tension acts in its opposite direction. Finally, what remains is the force mg sin theta that pulls the bob towards the main position. This makes the bob move towards the main position O. At the main position, the net force on the bob is again zero but the inertia of the bob makes it move until it reaches the other extreme position B. As the bob moves towards point B, it again starts to experience a pulling force towards the main position. This pulling force slows the movement of the bob until it stops moving at point B. At point B, the bob experiences the same forces as it did at point A. The force mg sin theta keeps trying to pull it back towards the main position O. And so, the bob starts moving towards O again. This way, the bob keeps oscillating between points A and B about its main position, point O. And this will go on forever if the pendulum is placed in a vacuum. If it's not, a third force opposes this oscillatory motion of the bob between A and B. This force is air resistance or friction, which will eventually make the bob come to a stop at the main position O. This air resistance is a very weak force and so we shall ignore it for the time being. Knowing that the restoring force always acts towards the main position, can you tell in which direction the acceleration of the bob will be directed? The acceleration of the bob, just like the restoring force, is always directed towards the main position O. Remember Newton's second law, F is equal to MA? The acceleration always has the same direction as the net force. The following formula is used to calculate the time period of a simple pendulum. Let's look at a problem. The time period of which of these pendulums will be greater? The first pendulum has a heavy concrete block as its bob. The second pendulum has a light ball. The time period of both these pendulums will be the same. We can see from the formula that the time period of a pendulum only depends on the length of the pendulum string L and gravity G. As both these pendulums have the same length L1 their time period will be the same. Let's look at another example. Which of these two pendulums will have a greater time period? Again, look at the formula. We can see that the displacement between the mean and extreme positions or amplitude does not have any effect on the time period. Therefore, both these pendulums will have the same time period. Now, let's do an exercise. What is the length of the given pendulum given that its time period is 3.14 seconds? G is equal to 10 meters per second square. Using the formula for the time period of a pendulum, we can calculate its length. 
After inputting the given values, we can arrange the equation to calculate the length. In this case, the length comes out to be 2.5 meters. To summarize, the motion of a pendulum is an example of simple harmonic motion. The forces on a pendulum always act towards the main position O of the pendulum. The time period of a pendulum is calculated using this equation. The time period of a pendulum does not depend on either the mass of the bob or the amplitude of the oscillations. It only depends on the length of the pendulum.